Hey guys, I am Hironobu, and this is something a little different. Now today I'm going to play Star Wars Galaxies, or more specifically, the Star Wars Galaxies emulator. This game originally came out in 2003, released by LucasArts, and it was the first MMORPG set in the Star Wars universe. It was shut down in uh, late 2011 to make room for Star Wars The Elder Republic, I believe, and I felt like it would be cool to make a little video series on this. Now, for reference, I'm actually playing this on the 5th, of May, so, or, no, the 4th. So, you know, May the 4th be with you, but I'm probably not going to upload it till Revenge of the 6th. <laughs> Anyways, um, I've actually been trying to make a video series on this for, like, three weeks, but I kept running into issues. But I think I got them all sorted out, and if you're seeing this video, then obviously I did. But these different attempts have given me a chance to, you know, make my character a bit quicker. So... I've been doing this, I've decided I'm gonna be a Twi'lek, and I'm gonna be tall and thin, because that's kinda how I am in the real life. With a nice little blue on, wait, no, blue with green accents color scheme, because I'm a fan of that whole thing. Now, um, obviously I'm playing on an emulated server, uh, specifically it's the Basilisk server, which is kind of the test server for this game, and this, originally, Star Wars Galaxies was kind of uh, divisive when it uh, came out, I guess, well, during its lifespan, because during its development period, it went through three major updates up and changes that kind of distant, that kind of uh, separated the older fans, because they wanted to bring in a new audience, but it never really, they never really marketed it well enough to gain enough of an audience to get rid of the older players, so the audience just kept kind of going down. But uh, the reason for this was, the first upgrade was called the Combat Upgrade, which came out around the time that World of Warcraft came out, and it was made to emulate it, but it didn't get the uh, viewer base at what they wanted to, and then because of that they decided to make the uh, NGE, which is New Game Enhancement, which also wasn't very well received by the fans, and yeah, this emulator is playing on a pre-combat upgrade universe, so it's kind of the first version of Star Wars Galaxies, but it's still in, I think, beta or alpha, it's not finished yet. And this game is a massive sandbox, There is, it's basically just, you create your own story within the Star Wars universe, I realized I forgot something. Um, but, basically, when it comes to massive sandboxes for me, the best way I can get through them is if I set myself little miniature goals, like set my own path. And I think what I wanted to do, at least for, at first, depending on how much this, um, like how many people care about this, I don't know. But I want to be a combat medic, basically. It's, it's a class that I've always kind of enjoyed because I like playing support, but I like dealing a bit of damage. So I'm going to start as a medic, and one thing I think is kind of interesting on a side note about this class selection screen, the profession selection, is when you pick another character, the previous one gets all dejected, and the new one kind of like stands up tall and acts all strong, like this one just smelled as himself. But I'm going to be a medic. Novice medics can heal light wounds and apply medical treatment in the field, and they get some modest amount of crafting ability to create other field medicines. They've got a lot of mind, which is where they uh, use their uh, stuff. Action and health aren't so great. And as I said, I've already had a couple weeks to decide, a few weeks to decide on a name, and I went with, I kept going with it because I kept having to stop and recreate my character. But Hironobu Vulisiru, I think, sounds kind of neat. So yeah, let's hope this actually works this time. Yeah, I'm excited, guys. It's a Star Wars day. Either way you look at it. Um, what else was I going to talk about? Well, I don't think it's going to matter much, because I know as soon as I start this, I'm going to have to do some massive changes to the uh, user interface and stuff, because it is, uh, it's is—it's—it's a bit archaic. But we start the game off in this little shuttle-type area. There's not much to it. We have to basically pick a warp terminal and go to whatever planet we want to go to. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off for a second and get the options all squared off. So see you guys. Okay, I think I got the main things out of the way. I got I got a second bar right here. This is my waypoint notifier, which I might move over here just so it's near the map. Uh, this is also related to the waypoint finder, I believe. I don't know. But then I might need somewhere else. I'll put it down here for now, actually. 
It's very customizable. You can just pretty much drag and drop anything anywhere. I like this HUD a lot. And, you're and I also need to turn on this little thing. It'll, I'll explain that later. Actually, I'll just explain it now. This is the con, basically. And what that is, is in, well, in older MMOs, you could consider your opponent, basically. And, like, if I click my, if I target myself, let's see, how do I do that? Is it, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I could just type in slash consider, and it'll say, it looks super tough, but you think you are too, because it, I mean, to me, I'm super tough. <laughs> It's just programmed into the game. But if I target some other enemy, which I'll get to later, it'll tell me like how likely they are to kill me. So I think now we'll go ahead and get started on the warp terminal. So we have six options for choosing a starting planet. We can either pick the planet, which is Tatooine, or Naboo, or Corellia. And there are three cities on each one that are major. Or we can go by faction. There's Imperial, Freelance, and Rebel. And there are one. there's one city on each of these starting planets that corresponds to each of them. And I, I personally think, I'm not sure, but I've re read this and it was talking about, like, Rebel Alliance pilots and Freelance pilots and Imperial pilots. I think that's related to the jump to light speed, but I'm not sure. But I think I'm going to start on maybe Corellia and Coronet City. Because it just looks kind of neat, and I haven't actually really been there. So let's go. All right. And this is Coronet City. It's it's pretty much one of the most popularly populated areas in this game. And you can see some people doing stuff. Uh, I think now would be a good time to go over the skills, because as I said, I want to be a combat medic. So, of course it doesn't want to work. Okay, did everything just not work? Did I forget to hit the button to save it? I did. Okay, guys, I'll be right back. Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> um... I changed the toolbars up here so they ran with the uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 keys instead of the function keys because I should have just said number keys, whatever, but I felt like it would be easier than having to reach out for the F1 key because F11 is my record button. But anyways, this is Coronet City, and I'm going to look at my skill menu now, and I'll shut that out. So um, my only profession right now is Medic. I'm Novice Medic, which means I have the ability to... Craft a biological effect controller, use a food and chemical crafting tool, make a liquid suspension, a small stim pack A, I can diagnose people, I can heal damages and wounds, I can forage for medical supplies, tend to damage and wounds, and that's about it. And if we notice at the top of Master Medic, there's a Combat Medic. And what I want to do is get to here eventually. But to get here, I have to fulfill every little requirement, like see how this Medic, the, the Combat Medic tab is above the Master Medic? It means... I have to get novice. I have to be a master medic if I want to be a combat medic. There's also a thing for marksman, and if I want to be a combat medic, I have to fulfill this whole ranged support tree branch. If I so, I'm probably going to need to get that soon. But uh, for now, you'll see I have four branches. And one thing I actually really like about this game is that there is a lot. There are a lot of different experience types. Like, um, all the first three medic skills use, um, what is it, let me see. Like, if I hover over it, it should say, yeah, this skill requires 1,000 points of medical experience. And all these three require 1,000 points of medical experience, except the organic chemistry, which is the crafting branch, requires medical crafting experience. And then with the, uh, marksman skill, which would be a lot better way to show this, um, each of these... Okay, yeah, this, it says it down here, too. 1,000 points of rifle weapon experience, pistol weapon experience, carbon weapon, weapon experience, or general combat experience. I have zero because I don't have any weapons. Well, I do, but I don't really have any that I can use for that. So I've got basic comprehension for... Uh, for I have comprehension of the basic language and speech, battle fatigue healing and stuff. Yeah, I've got some basic things for every medic and stuff. And if I look at my inventory, I have a set of basic clothes, a food and chemical crafting tool, a mirage melon, a survival knife, and a deed for an X-31 land speeder, which is the slowest vehicle in the game. But it's still slightly faster than my walking speed. I've also got a thousand credits in the bank and a thousand on, or a hundred on hand. Um, the survival knife probably isn't going to be used much at all because I don't have any reason to use a one-handed melee weapon like that. But... Is that? Okay, cool. There's a marksman trainer right here. Basically, he teaches marksmanship, and it 
you can talk to marksman trainers to up your skills. So I want to learn a skill, novice marksman, it'll cost 100 credits, so yeah. And now I have the abilities of, a, of marksman, but they didn't give me the tools. Like, I don't have a gun on me automatically, they're not going to give me that, I have to find it on my own. On this note, I'm actually going to go ahead and open up the abilities area, because it real, I realized that with the medic, I have a few abilities, like diagnose, healing, and detending, and foraging, so I'm going to put all those on my toolbar so I have them for later. I want to check something. Okay, I had to make a few changes to the uh, hotkeys up there, I decided to do it off screen because, you know, why waste my time? Why waste your time, you know? So, in this game, the only real shops are player-made. This is an entirely player-run community, or uh, economy, basically. So what I'm going to do is open up the planetary map, and this is the city of Co or this is oh we're wrong one I don't need to move this I need to move this okay move that back this is the planet of Coronet now some of these uh, cities like like Coronet and I think Tyrena but I'm not sure are made in the game you know they're pre-made cities but there's also places like Pre-CU and Requiem maybe an insane asylum and these are player-run cities because if you get enough people in a place with enough buildings you can just make a city. And, yeah, what I'm going to look for is a terminal for a bazaar. Now, if I open up, if I hit the button, I can see all the little areas in the cities, or in the map. And what I'm going to do is zoom in on my area to try to find the closest one. And usually they're in, like, clusters of four. And the nearest one seems to be right here, so I'm going to create a waypoint. And now it should appear right there, and if I look in the direction... There's a massive beam of light right where I need to go. And I'm going to actually use this, uh, maybe not because I'm in the city, but, um, yeah. This is a very much, at least in the beginning, until I find people to work with, it's going to be a very grind-heavy let's play, or not even a let's play, because I don't really think this is going to be as much of a let's play as my normal stuff. I'm going to call this an MMO log, even though the title probably gave that away. But it's going to be very grinding heavy, and I think I'm going to use the grinding times to actually kind of talk about the game. Because, well, I have no other reason, or I have no reason not to, you know, and I mean, it could be a good time to do stuff. So I think there it is. There's a bizarre terminal right in front of this little spaceport thing. Shuttle port, maybe, I don't know. And I can open it up. Waiting for data. That might take a second. Okay. So basically, with the marksman skill, I have... That's not the marksman skill. There we go. I have the ability to use D18 pistol, DH17 carbine, and DL20, D DLT20 rifle. And this is on top of the basic CDEF weapons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in the pistols, rifles, and carbines and try to find the uh, cheapest one right now. Because that's all I'm worried about right now, because I don't really have any money. No, that's melee. Whoops. Okay, there's this DH-17. How's the stats on that? Because it's for, uh, what, what was that? 40? And that's pretty good. Let's look at the pistols. Because as much as I want to get the uh, best thing, I'd rather... I want to get the ones that I'm, like, got the marksman certification for, the specialized ones, because I feel like I'd get more out of them, personally. Looks like the cheapest one I'm going to find is that carbine. Because it's like 40 credits. And yeah. So let's... Let's see. Is that everything? Yeah, I'm just going to... Yeah, place the bid for 40 credits. And now I have the rifle. And while I'm here, because I have nothing else to do with this thing, I'm going to sell my survival knife on the markets. And I'm not worried about too much money, I'll just put it for like 50 credits. I think there's a, uh, you have to spend money to put it on the bazaar anyways, so. Yeah, there's a 20 credit fee, and now it's up there for 50 credits, so if anyone wants to pick that up, they are free too, I guess. And actually, another thing I'm going to do while I'm here is, is there's a little thing that says show experience monitor. And that shows up down here, I'm going to move it. Where's the moving part? I know there's a way to, there we go, I just had it. I'm going to move it right under my character thing, and 
stretch it out so it's like fitting and flush. And I'm going to have it on, let's say, first aid, because that's one of the three skills that use that. And if I drag it down a couple of times, I can actually put in, like, organic chemistry and, what was the other one? Ranged support, because those are the three skills, those are the three experience things I'm going to be accumulating that are relevant to my position. And that's important to me, because, yeah. Um, so I guess now we can start grinding. That's really all there is to it for now. Just trying to gain a bit of experience before I... Uh, a little bit of experience, so I'm not running into everything blind. I'm going to have to get another skill eventually for crafting stuff, but we'll get to that hurdle when we need to. I'm going to actually go ahead and use this deed to generate the vehicle. And there we go. Now you can see if I open up my data pad, which is pretty much all my information, it's like a journal, I can see all the waypoints I've made, all, all one of them. I can see I have the data for an X31 land speeder, meaning I can call it at pretty much any time. All the points of interest in Corellia, or on Corellia, and any draft schematics, which right now I only have the four medical ones. So let's go ahead and just step out of the city. Yeah, this is the slowest vehicle ever. But the music isn't bad. I'm going to go ahead and equip that rifle while I'm on this. So you can see some other characters doing stuff. I think that guy's surveying, but I'm not sure. He might just be kneeling down because he's weird. I'm not going to judge. What is that? I'm going to go ahead and not. That looks humanoid. So... I've actually never... I don't know, this This is a kind of a neat little environment, because I I had a test character. My first characters when I tried this, I kept trying to bring them to Tatooine, because it's kind of an iconic planet in the Star Wars universe. But, yeah. And I'm going to try out the Medical Forge, even though there's really no reason to, because I have no way to like survey or anything, but it just kind of does a random search in the area. And if there's something in here, it'll tell me, I think... Like, let me see... I failed to find anything worth foraging, but I don't think that means there's nothing there, it just means I didn't find it, so I'm going to take a step to the left and try again. And it costs a little bit of my action, I'll get into that when we start some combat, because the health system in this game is actually pretty interesting. See, my, my attempt was a success, and I picked up a shul nef, which is a food that, I don't know what it does, let me see, examine. It increases my mind, which is going to be useful if I, uh, if and when I start doing medical stuff. Let's just try to forge again, see what we can pick up. You'll notice I'm targeting my land speeder, and that was kind of unintentional because I had to click it to get into it. But you might also notice there's a little bit of white on the health bar. And basically, every time I pull it out of my data pad, it takes damage. So eventually, I'm going to have to like either find a way to repair it or get another vehicle... Um, hopefully by the time that happens I'll have enough money to not have to worry about it. Nothing in the area to forge. There we go. So now I know to move on. Okay, so let's do this. What is this? A meat lump oaf. I don't want to fight a human target yet, because I feel like it might end in my death. <laughs> There's a user called Mobius1 who did a Let's Play kind of thing of the Star Wars Galaxies emulator, but he actually knows what he's doing. And he did a whole educational tutorial series. I watched a few episodes of his and realized that I'd like to give this a shot, but I'd like to give it a shot in a slightly blind manner because I don't want to, you know, I want a fresh experience. And this is a massive undertaking. I already know it will be. So I picked this game up um, like a year before it shut down because I picked up the Star Wars collection on Steam and at the time this was in it. And... Yeah, I realized my mouse disappeared, so I double alted because if I go over the border, is it just not showing the mouse at all? Because that's like a separate issue. Yeah, it's not showing the mouse at all. I'm sorry, guys. I tried. Maybe it was because I went off the screen, which means I'm flying through this blind, guys. E. I didn't even check if that was a success. No, it wasn't. I wasn't paying attention. Um. But anyways, what I was saying is there is a user Mobius1 
And his whole playthrough of this kind of inspired me to do this, because I thought it would be cool to have a blind eye. And yeah, got this on Steam. But I never really played it because I didn't have money to pay for a subscription. So I just I, I should have tried it out around the, la in the end because I had a 14-day free trial through, because I owned the game. But I didn't, and that's kind of something I kind I regret a little bit because it was the complete adventure. It had all the experience, it had all the expansions and everything, and it would have been neat to like see what I could do in this game. But I just never did, and I guess I'll never experience that Star Wars Galaxies. But from what I've heard, it wasn't the best Star Wars Galaxies. In fact, I think the consensus is that when this is finished, it'll be a pretty good representation of what the best of Star Wars Galaxies was. Because right now, even though they're on the skill tree, I believe, I think they're on the skill tree. Um, like, let me see. No, I think maybe all the ones that are here are available, but um, there are Jedi and pilots in the full. There were Jedi and pilots in the full game that weren't um, implemented. They haven't been. They haven't been implemented yet. I'll say that. I guess there are there are plans for that to happen, but. Yeah, there's a little bit of rubber banding this, that's going to happen. I'm just going to deal with it. Uh, my inspiration for doing this series came from something I did once years ago. What is that? Mountain, a baby mountain mona. I don't want to fight the baby because I feel like the baby's going to just attract the mother's... What is this? A dead something. But uh, my inspiration for doing this started a few years ago. I was actually doing something pretty similar. There's a... There's another MMO called Ultima Online, and there was an older version of the game called The Second Age, and a lot of users thought it was like the best iteration of Ultima Online, because it was very much a wide-open sandbox, very unforgiving, and they made a fan-emulated server based on that. And I gave it a shot, because it was free, and I was like, why not? And in that game, when you start off, you get a journal. Literally an empty journal where you can just write your stuff in. And I was making a log of my little adventure. I was camping out in the woods pretty much, mostly, and then, like, a yeti, some sort of big monster, I don't know if it was a yeti, but, it, like, a massive monster came through and scared me back to the village, and I moved out, and then someone killed me on the way to another village and took my... At this point, I had two books, because I filled up the first one, bought another one, and this guy killed me, took my books, and then taunted me about having my books, and I was just kind of like, this guy sucks, and I stopped playing it because I was sad, and, yeah, um... I still, I still miss those books. I wonder if, I almost wonder if, like, the guy still plays the game and he, he just has those books or sells them to people or sold them off and they're just, like, weird commodities, but I doubt that because that's kind of stupid. Anyways, looks like there are some butterflies of some kind, and I'm going to kill the butterflies. And now I can talk about combat. So, oh, I forgot to do the thing. Um, one second. I'm going to just go ahead and go to the other because I need to put Neil... It's very important for me to put Neil on there. So there are three different little stances you can take. Standing, kneeling, and prone. With each one, um, you take more damage. Like, melee damage as you're farther down, but you have a higher chance to hit. So there's kind of a risk-reward type thing. Oops. And I don't know what's going on with that butterfly, but this one... This one, I'm going to go ahead and go prone, and then I'm going to shoot it. And after a second, it's going to say I can't attack while prone because he's too close to me, so I'm going to go ahead and use my point-blank shot, and you'll notice each of us have three health bars, a red, a green, and a blue. The red one is our health, like our vitality, our blue, our blue one is mine, and the green one is action. It's more health action mine. It's called the ham bar by some. I can't loot anything because I don't have the skill for it. But uh, I won that thing. And basically with combat, when you execute an attack, if as like a basic person, whatever, a novice, you have a chance to hit any of those three health bars. So uh, your attacks, like this first one hit is mine, but now I have to stand up, or get up a little bit, and the second one hit is health. And if one of those bars goes down, the enemy is taken down, he's incapacitated, he's done. It's kind of neat, because in the beginning you, can, you can't really focus your attacks, but as you get better in combat, you can start attacking certain spots or start attacking more enemies. And yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's really neat. So I'm gonna go ahead and get down again. Kill this other. Oh, I killed the baby. Ha. Huh. And you also notice some of my attacks will use my action or mind or health to perform them. I think, like my uh, overcharge or my yeah, one of them uses my mind. I think I can check. Maybe I can't. Maybe I can. I don't know. Yeah, like the overcharge expends my weapon's power supply, which I should really take a look at. Let's examine. So. Yeah, the special attacks cost is right here. 14 health, 27 action, 11 mine. Now I have, if, I, if this little thing will get out of the way, I have 600 health, 950 action, and 1100 mind. Right now, at least. And so the um, the special attacks don't really take off too much, but they if I'm in a long battle, I will see the effects. So is there another butterfly to kill? <laughs> That's a weird segue, but I'm going to go with it. I'm going to stop using that for now, actually. And, yeah, once I get within a certain range, you can't attack while prone. I've done some pretty good damage to his health, but for all I know, I could just do attacks to his action in mind, and he could just wreck one of my other bars, because that's just how combat works in this game. I was lucky, though, and I managed to get some carbine and combat experience. The, com the carbine experience isn't going to be a big deal for me, because I want to focus on combat medic, and that's not a thing. But, yeah, let's... You know, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and... Forage. This is also a pretty good way to show off the consider command. If I can target him, if it'll stop moving, I'm going to go to chat, type slash consider, and it'll say... The Corellian butterfly looks like instant death, because yeah, if I'm unlucky, this thing can kill me. And this little con bar box that I checked, it'll put little rings around the opponents, and a red ring means it could kill you, blue means it probably won't. Uh, that's actually not a blue ring, though, that's my target indicator. But yeah, let's go ahead and kill one more, just to see what that's like. I used the overcharge again, I feel bad. And I did really good attack to his action, 